is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 5 o'clock here on your Thursday. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. Here's what's making headlines on this April 16th. And again, we'll continue to wear our uniforms with pride. And knowing that we're representing her and that her legacy will continue for each of us. Fellow officers and friends remembering IPD officer Brand Leith for her service and her sacrifice. This morning, how the community is honoring this beloved mother and hero as she is laid to rest. As more cases of COVID-19 are reported, emergency services are being used more and more. What Indiana is doing to prepare for an increase in 911 calls. And one Indiana city is getting creative to help health care workers, how they are transforming a historic landmark into a place to stay. But first, here at 5 o'clock, we got to get a check of your forecast on this Thursday. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is standing by with not the best news <laughs> as we are in the middle of spring. But Todd, I feel like during this pandemic, we're learning patience. I yeah, think if right? there's good weather on the way, I can wait for it. You know, and that's a good thing to have. Don't get angry at the weatherman. <laughs> the meteorologists here have a little bit of patience. I think this is the third or fourth morning in a row that we've had a freeze warning in place across central Indiana. Uh, today is a very, very cold start. In fact, this morning is the coldest start that we've had through this whole stretch this week of below normal temperatures. 25 right now in Bloomington, 24 in Crawfordsville as well as Greencastle. Indianapolis is at 24 degrees as well. Richmond is at 25. One of the reasons why we're so cold this morning, the clear skies are a few flurries off to the east. They are continuing off into Ohio, but eventually this snow will start to impact our area late tonight and then into the day tomorrow. But today it's going to be a dry day. It starts off with lots of sun sunshine. Clouds will increase as the day goes on, but it will be not as windy as well. So you'll have the opportunity to get out and about today with high temperatures that eventually will be topping off in the mid to upper 40s. I mentioned the chance of snow. Some of you will see accumulation. I'll talk about that coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look right now at your commute this morning. This is I-65 near 30th Street. Traffic here is moving along just fine. Pretty quiet out there this morning. No issues to slow you down. This morning, the city of Indianapolis will say final farewells to a brave public servant. IMPD officer Brianne Leith will be laid to rest today. The 24-year-old mother was killed in the line of duty last week when responding to a domestic disturbance call. Officer Leith's funeral is going to look a little different than what we're used to as we continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with how IMPD is handling the services. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So this is the first IMPD funeral to take place here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And that is so officers can attend the funeral and remain socially distant. They'll be in their cars, on the track, watching the funeral services virtually on their phones or on their computers. Because of the ongoing CDC restrictions, the public will not be able to attend the services and there will be no visitation. Community members are instead being asked to participate virtually. Officer Breanne Leith is remembering for her dedication and commitment to her family and the city of Indianapolis. And as we've all seen from pictures of Officer Leith, a contagious smile that lights up any room. We spoke with Major Ida Williams, who says anyone who met Officer Leith knew just how much she loved her job. We never hesitated to talk to young people or those that were interested in law enforcement. She often shared her experiences on what she went through to become a police officer. So again, I would ask that to hold on to the memories that are being displayed about her and just know that she loved this job more than anything. Again, the funeral for Officer Leith is at 11 and a procession will escort her remains to Crown Hill Cemetery. With the exception of the Chief of Police and the Honor Guard, IMPD officers will not be able to participate in the graveside services. This service will be reserved for a small group of family. Now, due to COVID-19 restrictions, again, they are asking that people please remain socially distanced while watching the procession. Either stay in your car or stay in your own yard as the procession goes by. We will stream it for you right here here on RTV6 and on the RTV6 News app starting at 11 o'clock. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6.
Kelsey, thank you. We are continuing to follow the very latest with the COVID-19 outbreak here in the state of Indiana. The state health department is reporting 49 new deaths from this virus. In total, 436 Hoosiers have died. 440 more have also tested positive, bringing the total number of cases statewide to nearly 9,000. As Indiana prepares for a surge in coronavirus cases, they're learning from the challenges other cities and states have struggled with across the country. Hot spots like New York City experience seeing close to 100% increase in 911 call volume during their surge periods, which is why the Indiana Statewide 911 Board has been working to ensure that they're ready for an influx of calls. Our Alyssa Donovan has all the details. Recently, 911 call volumes have gone down because of Governor Holcomb's stay-at-home order. However, state leaders know that those numbers could increase at any time due to COVID-19 cases, which is why they're doing everything they can to prepare for that possibility. In Hamilton County, 911 dispatchers have been split up between two buildings. We have crews that only work at this building, and then we have crews that are only working out of the backup center. So if someone does get sick, it won't take out the entire county. However, if that does happen, the statewide 911 board has put a plan in place. Should numbers start dropping uh, as far as employees go, and then we need help picking up phone calls, we've made arrangements uh, with other counties for them to be able to pick up our, our uh, 911 calls. There is no guarantee we'll see an increase in calls, but if we do, these centers are ready. We don't want to experience what other cities have experienced, which is a backup. Dispatchers already have a high stress job and they've had to adjust very quickly to necessary changes. We uh, added to our protocols to ask additional questions. Uh, if somebody had been out of, the, you know, out of the country, if they were experiencing any of these symptoms, so we could uh, inform the responders prior to them arriving. They also have to be aware of bed counts in hospitals. That way, if a facility is at capacity, they can inform first responders to take a patient elsewhere. All of these actions are meant to better the response to you or your family members if emergency assistance is needed. We want to make sure that every Hoosier that needs help gets it uh, absolutely as soon as possible uh, in the best way possible. So we're doing everything we can behind the scenes. We really hope we're over prepared. There are a lot of services associated with 911 here in Indiana. One of those is text to 911. If you are experiencing some of those COVID-19 symptoms like shortness of breath and are unable to make a phone call, you can text 911 to get the service you need. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers initiative is already committed to connecting you to job opportunities, but that mission is even more important as the unemployment rates skyrocket amid the pandemic. The landscaping company up in Westfield is looking to add some new employees. Spring is a busy time of year for the Hiddle landscape in Hamilton County. The company says it needs more workers and says prior experience is not necessary to get the job. If you don't have experience, maybe you worked in an industry where you're experiencing a layoff or a furlough as a result of this crazy COVID-19 crisis, um, we are always looking for humble, hungry, and smart individuals. Well, the company offers training. Available positions include landscaping crew leaders and members and irrigation service technicians. Spring is also a busy time for construction. The Indiana Department of Transportation is looking to fill more than 1,000 construction-related jobs. They're holding a virtual job fair for more information on these positions at 10 o'clock this morning. Representatives will talk about what INDOT does, the benefits, and how you can apply. For more information on this job fair, you can head to our website, hiringhoosiers.com. The city of Columbus, Indiana is giving health care workers a place to stay by using a downtown landmark. The former main post office on Washington Street is now being called the CRH Heroes House. It gives Columbus regional health workers a way to keep their families safe from exposure while they treat patients with COVID-19. The building has 17 private rooms with their own bathrooms and it's in the process of transitioning into a home addiction recovery center. Local restaurants are also providing meals. First responders and healthcare workers are also getting support from a Speedway company. Batheads Eyewear is one of several companies working together with the state to make personal protective equipment. They typically specialize in glasses and sunglasses, but now the company is manufacturing and distributing products like safety goggles and face shields. My whole idea with this was 
you know, let's start doing personal protection equipment. I had the opportunity and was able to find uh, the right people to partner with and team up with to do this manufacturing. The equipment is delivered to the National Guard, which is then distributed to area medical facilities. RTV6 continues working together with the United Way of Central Indiana. We're teaming up for the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. The initiative supports organizations that serve people and families affected by this pandemic. You can donate to the fund by texting HELP2020 to 91999. The time right now is 510. It's Thursday morning. Let's toss things over to Todd Clausen. Hey, Todd. Lauren, it's a cold Thursday morning for us. Here we are in the middle of April, and we're talking about temperatures that are below freezing any where you go across central Indiana this morning. So as you wake up, if you don't have to go outside, I'd encourage you to wait a little while for these temperatures to warm up. Maybe grab an extra cup of coffee or hot chocolate as temperatures will stay in the 20s through at least 8 a.m. Once that happens, we do have clear skies right now and plenty of sunshine. We'll see our temperatures warm quite quickly this morning, eventually to highs in the mid 40s to the north, around 50 degrees in southern locations. However, tonight into tomorrow, we bring some snow and of the forecast for parts of the area and it will likely accumulate more on that coming up when good morning indiana continues the time now is 5 11 stay with us we're back in just a couple minutes at night 8 7 central on abc Well, school buildings closed for the year across our state and unemployment skyrocketing due to the pandemic, we know that many families may be struggling to make sure that their kids are fed. And we see the efforts here in the city to feed Indianapolis children, but that need is still great in rural communities. Sometimes in areas that are more spread out can be difficult to get food to the kids who are in need. Richland Bean Blossom Community School Corporation serves the northwest portion of Monroe County. We talked to their director of nutrition services and healthy schools for the Mustangs. She tells us the need is growing for meals in their more rural community, but if parents are working during the day or people at home don't have their own transportation, it can be really difficult to make it to those weekly meal pickups on Mondays at the junior high that runs from 11 to 1. That's why the district is literally bringing the food to some of their neighborhoods that are most in need right now using their healthy food truck. We are, you know, providing some uh, food for our families, some familiar faces and some fun. You know, we're, we're about 38% uh, free and reduced here. Again, a small community. We're rural, of course, like you said. So um, a lot of families can't get to us necessarily. So that's why we want to get to them with the food truck. Well, to minimize the risk of exposure to COVID-19, the district has revised their feeding schedule in recent weeks. On Mondays, children is up to the age of 18 can pick up breakfast and lunch at the junior high school. On Mondays, the food truck travels out to those various neighborhoods across their district. We have the locations and the times detailed for you on this story on our website, theindychannel.com. New social distancing guidelines for certain businesses are expected to be announced by the president today. However, industry CEOs aren't so sure that that's the best idea. Many say they'd like more access to coronavirus testing and protective gear before they start letting their employees return to work. Trump's plan is to ease restrictions in areas with lower infection rates. It will ultimately be up to state governors to approve the guidelines. The CDC says more than 9,000 of the nation's healthcare workers have been affected by the coronavirus. The officials say that number is likely underestimated because most of the reports of positive cases do not report if a person works in the industry. More than half of those healthcare workers got infected on the job. 90% of them were not hospitalized. Many have already gotten the government stimulus check in their bank accounts, but if you haven't got yours yet, there's a way to find out when it's going to arrive. The IRS created an online tool called Get My Payment that can be used to check the status of your money. It's now available on the IRS website. You need to enter your social security number, date of birth and mailing address. The first payments will go out to those who are already filed for the 2018 or 2019 tax returns and authorized direct deposit for their refund. Social Security recipients will also automatically receive theirs even if they haven't returned filed a return. The time right now was 517. Let's check in with Todd and today's chilly forecast. Yeah, and that's the main headline today is the chilly weather that can
continues across the area. We have not seen above normal temperatures at all this entire week, and that's not going to change as we progress throughout the remainder of the week and into the weekend. There's snow in the forecast for some of you tonight. That is not a typo. And then we have a weekend warm-up finally heading our way as we inch closer back to normal. Skies are clear this morning, and that's one of the reasons why it's so cold. Once again, the winds are light as well. 24 degrees is the temperature in Indianapolis, and that's the temperature in many locations. In fact, some of you are below that 24 degree mark, some of you a little bit above, but everybody's below freezing. Now, we do have a good amount of sunshine to start our day here across the area, and with that sunshine right off the bat, we'll see our temperatures moderate pretty quickly this morning, and we're about 42 degrees already by the time we get to the noon hour. That's not good for this time of year. We should be a lot warmer than that. However, considering where we're coming from this morning, by the time we get there, that's a pretty significant jump, and then we'll warm a couple more degrees as the clouds increase throughout the day to highs that'll be right around 47 to 50 degrees, depending on where you live with the warmer temperatures being the further south you are. So it's not a bad day today. It's not as windy as yesterday. Uh, so you'll have the opportunity to get out and about. You're just going to have to bundle up a little bit. Here's our problem off to our west. Notice the snow now already making its way into western Illinois. This is going to head our way late tonight into the overnight hours. It's a pretty thin band of snow. So not all of you are going to see snow by any means. From Indianapolis to the south is probably just going to be mainly rain. But in the northern locations, and we're talking about our far northern locations and then the rest of northern Indiana, uh, we will get a pretty good band of snow that's going to set up. The question is where exactly does that rain snow line set up? Lafayette, Kokomo, over towards uh, Marion, Hartford City, you're kind of like right on the border. So the, just know the further north you are, the better chance of seeing some accumulating snow. Again, this is just a rain event for most of us here across the area, but if you do live in those northern locations, you'll get some decent accumulation because this snow is coming in while it is dark with the sun set. So as we go throughout the overnight hours into tomorrow, there's a sharp, a sharp drop in snow totals. Once you work your way south of that line to the north, and as I mentioned, it's rain uh, for Indianapolis. But here are some of those potential snowfall totals in northern locations. We're looking at generally about one to two inches of snow. It's not significant, and most of that will melt away. So if you don't have to walk out the door tomorrow morning and get on the roadways, I encourage you not to do it there in northern locations because it'll melt away as temperatures climb into the mid-40s by the afternoon hours. And then the warm-up will continue around 60 for the weekend and then 65, Lauren, on Tuesday. That is going to feel oh so nice across the area with plenty of sunshine. Just a few spotty showers in the forecast on Sunday and then again on Wednesday. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We're keeping a close eye on traffic as you're heading out on the roads this Thursday. Here's a look on the north side. Good morning to you. I-465 near US 31 and Meridian Street. You can see a few headlights there moving across your screen. Traffic here is quiet. We'll keep you updated if there are any crashes or delays you need to avoid for your commute. Many celebrities are establishing funds and other projects to help during this pandemic. Actress Taraji Henson is offering something to African Americans that hit that have been hit hard by this disease. Henson announced on Instagram that she is launching a COVID-19 free virtual therapy program. It's through her Boris Lawrence Hansen Foundation, which focuses on mental health. The Empire Star encourages anyone struggling to make an appointment for a free teletherapy session with a licensed clinician. If you've ever second guessed or had some reservations or were afraid to um, reach out or deal with uh, mental illness or check on your mental health, now is the perfect time because we are in a situation where we can do it from home, the comforts of our own home. Registration is open now on the Boris Lawrence Henson Foundation website. Sony is helping people play at home while they are staying at home during the coronavirus pandemic. The company announcing that it's offering PlayStation 4 games for free. Players can get Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, which includes three games featuring treasure hunting hero Nathan Drake. There's also a Journey, a single player game about a mysterious cloaked character in a magical desert world. The free download starts on Wednesday and it ends on May 5th. As part of the Play at Home initiative, 
initiative, Sony is also donating $10 million to support independent game developers. If you're looking for a family-friendly way to pass the time, ABC is hosting a National Disney sing-along tonight. The one-hour special will be hosted by Ryan Seacrest and features celebrities and their families as they take on their favorite Disney tunes from home. Some of the songs include Be Our Guest, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, and Do You Want to Build a Snowman? You can catch the special right here on RTV6 that starts at 8 o'clock tonight. It was no ordinary Zoom class for one group of Florida kindergartners this week. After the break, why they got to rock out with a personal concert from John Bon Jovi. I'll tell you more about that coming up. Welcome back. The time right now is 526. Kindergarten students in Florida got to rock out in their Zoom class with the help of John Bon Jovi, John bon Jovi himself. Take a look. The class's teacher recently asked the students to write about their time in quarantine. It's similar to a songwriting challenge Bon Jovi recently put out on social media. So the teacher reached out to the rock star who agreed to drop in onto this online class. Using the kids' words from their assignment, he performed a mini concert for the students and their parents. The parents in school officials thanked Bon Jovi, calling this experience unforgettable. That is pretty cool, Todd. You know, it is. It's awesome to see all these bigger names doing that. Of course, Bon Jovi and a couple weeks ago, I think what Peyton Manning, he dropped into that yeah. class at the University of Tennessee. So everybody's home. So, you know, why not, right? Yeah, Absolutely. the kids are probably like, hey, look, mom and dad, who's look who's on my Zoom call. And they're probably like, holy <laughs> they're moly. They're like, what? No way, no way. And then lo and behold. Yeah, so, there he is. All right, awesome to see. Not so awesome to see these temperatures. Uh, we're sitting in the 20s in all locations except Muncie. You're at 30 degrees, 24 in Indy, 25 in Bloomington, 22 is the current temperature in Crawfordsville. Because we're this cold, freeze warnings are posted across the entire area. That later shade of purple, though, that you see in northwest Indiana, that's a winter weather advisory. And that's because there's some snow heading our way for parts of the area. We'll talk more about that coming up in the next half hour of Good Morning Indiana. The time now is 527. We're back in just a couple minutes. Weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Not only did we lose a sister, but we also lost a dear friend. Now at 4.30 on Good Morning Indiana, the city preparing to say goodbye to one of its fallen heroes. We will continue to wear our uniform with pride. And every day we suit up, we will suit up no end. It breathes in our hearts and on our minds. Today, IMPD officer Brianne Leith will be laid to rest. This morning, how she's being honored by her family, friends, and the community she gave her life to protect and serve. And we will have more coming up on remembering that hero today. The time right now, though, is 5.30 on our Thursday. And we want to thank you for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is joining me in studio. But from a distance today, Todd, it is good to see you, but not good to see what's behind you. <laughs> no, you know, freeze warnings posted once again. And when I was this thermometer and I was outside, I'd be shaking, too. It's that cold for the middle of April. We should only be getting down into the upper 30s and 40s this time. Time of year and here we are and this morning on April the 16th talking about temperatures that are down into the 20s 24 in Indianapolis 27 in Lafayette 25 in Bloomington southern locations here good morning to you in Bedford 26 degrees Columbus you're at 28 Spencer 26 so it is cold no matter where you go with the clear skies that are in place now the good news is we'll start the day off with a nice amount of sunshine and that'll allow our temperatures to moderate pretty quickly across the area but off to our west, there is a storm system, and we do have snow in the forecast. We've been talking about this all week, how Friday morning was going to be our best opportunity to pick up some accumulating snow across parts of the area. Indianapolis to the south, we're just fine. It's northern locations. We'll dive into that in main weather for you in more detail. But today, it's a bright start, a little more of a cloudy finish. The wind's not as strong today, which is good news. But we're quickly up into the 40s by the noon hour with highs today. Eventually, Lauren, that'll be topping off right around the 50-degree mark 
across most of the area. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look right now at traffic for your morning commute. Here's a look on the north side, 465 near US 31 Meridian Street. Traffic in this area is moving along up to speed right now. No major issues to report around the metro area other than that I-70 closure on the east side. You'll need to give yourself extra time to avoid that today. We will continue to wear our uniform with pride. And every day we suit up, we will suit up knowing there breathes in our hearts and on our minds. Well, this morning, the city of Indianapolis will say final farewells to a brave public servant. IMPD officer Brianne Leith will be laid to rest today. The 24-year-old mother was killed in the line of duty last week while responding to a domestic disturbance call. Officer Leith's funeral is going to look a little bit different as we continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with how IMPD is remembering Officer Brianne Leith. Kelsey, good morning. Good morning, Lauren. So Officer Leith is remembered as a devoted and loving mother to her three-year-old, a committed officer for the Indianapolis Metro Police Department. And of course, as we've all seen in pictures of her, someone with a contagious smile that can light up a room. For the first time in IMPD history, Officer Leith's funeral will be held at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Normally, officer funerals are held at Banker's Life, but due to the current climate, a service at IMS gives officers a chance to attend the service while also abiding by CDC restrictions and remaining socially distant. We spoke to Major Ida Williams, who knew Officer Leith well, about what it's been like to lose her. As a female officer and females on this agency, not only did we lose a sister, but we also lost a dear friend. We will continue to wear our uniform with pride. And every day we suit up, we will suit up knowing their breeze in our hearts and on our minds. The procession and funeral will be following all social distancing guidelines. Officers will stay apart and for the most part in their vehicles. With the exception of the chief of police and the honor guard, IMPD officers will not be able to participate in graveside services. This service will be reserved for the small group for a small group of family members. Now, due to COVID-19 restrictions, there is gonna, not going to be a public service for Officer Leith, but we will be streaming it live for you on the RTV6 News app and right here um, on RTV6, right here on Channel 6, so make sure you can tune into that at 11 o'clock. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you again. We want to remind you that this is a virtual service for Officer Leith, again, starting at 11 a.m. this morning. The funeral will be broadcast live here on RTV6, the app, our website, theindychannel.com. And coming up here in the next half hour, we are going to have more on the life and legacy of Officer Leith. We thank her and all the other officers for their service today. Turning now to the very latest on the coronavirus outbreak in the state of Indiana. The State Department of Health is reporting more positive cases of COVID-19 and more deaths from this virus. As of Wednesday, 436 Hoosiers have lost their lives due to the virus. More than 8,900 positive cases of COVID-19 have been reported to the state and more than 48,000 people have been tested. And this morning, there is a call for lawmakers to address the disproportionate impact COVID-19 is having on the black community in our state. African Americans make up about 20% of the COVID-19 cases and deaths, while being at just 10% of the state's population. The Indiana Black Legislative Black Caucus sent a letter to Governor Eric Holcomb urging him to address these staggering numbers. They're calling for several steps to be taken, including testing and triage centers in black communities, anti-racism training for health workers, and an outreach campaign geared towards African Americans. All recommendations that public policy the experts say could make a real difference. It boils down to actually just calling things being related to race. I think often the language gets conflated in things like poverty or crime, when really we're seeing that these racial disparities are happening regardless of income, regardless of race, regardless of some of the uh, behaviors that uh, folks like to kind of conflate with race. Governor Holcomb did respond to the letter from the IBC saying he's looking forward to working with the group. The governor also addressing questions about when the state could see businesses reopen during yesterday's COVID-19 press briefing. Holcomb says the decision will be data-based and depend on how the state is doing in terms of COVID-19 cases and the infection rate. In terms of how we will 
reopen or re-engage on the economic front, uh, it'll be a rolling reopen. It won't be all at once. It won't be flipping a light switch. I've said from day one that while we may be one of the first to go into this, my goal is to get us to be one of the first out of it and to have a healthy workforce ready to go. Governor Holcomb also said he's working with business leaders and organizations to see when they would feel it would be safe for them to reopen. Right now, no timeline has been set for the rolling reopen to begin. Hotspot cities like New York New York City experienced close to 100% spike in their 911 call volume during their surge periods. While Indiana doesn't expect that much of an increase, the state leaders know there is potential for more calls to come in due to COVID-19. That's why they are preparing now. Our Alyssa Donovan explains how statewide 911 call centers are preparing to respond quickly quickly to you and your family. State leaders say there's no guarantee there will be a spike in 911 calls due to a surge in COVID-19 here in Indiana. However, if it does happen, they are completely prepared. Indiana's Public Safety Answering Points, or PSAPs, are part of a system led by the state's 911 board. Indiana is a world leader in 911 technology with important life-saving programs like text to 911 and language interpretation services to help people who call and need a translator. The board has the ability to adapt to situations like this because of its structure. Recently, they have been preparing for any issues that could arise due to COVID-19, ensuring each county has another county dispatch center ready to take over in case of emergency. Marion County, which receives the highest amount of 911 calls, has multiple counties prepared to take over. Indiana State Treasurer Kelly Mitchell says ensuring these safeguards are in place could help save lives during a COVID-19 surge. We don't want to experience what other cities have experienced, which is a backup um, of calls or of people waiting for help or for transportation. We want to make sure that every Hoosier that needs help gets it uh, absolutely as soon as possible uh, in the best way possible. So we're doing everything we can behind the scenes. We really hope we're over prepared. And this is a great time to get the Smart 911 app. This is a way for you to create a profile that will pop up when you call a dispatch center. This can give information like other health issues you may have, as well as attach your cell phone with your home address so dispatchers know where to send emergency crews. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. All right, thank you. Alyssa, the time now is 540 this morning, and we're starting off with clear skies, and that's one of the reasons why it's so cold this morning, and that's why there's a freeze warning that's in effect. But at least once the sun comes up a little after 7 o'clock, there'll be plenty of sunshine this morning. So if you're going out for that morning walk, you'll need to bundle up, but you also need the sunglasses. This afternoon, though, the clouds will start to increase, and that'll be ahead of our next storm system that is going to impact the area starting tomorrow. So this says rain chances, but I really should change it to precip chances because for some of you tomorrow, with this rain chance being high on Friday, you'll mix in with a little bit of snow. But tomorrow's going to be not the most pleasant day for us with rain for most of us, snow to the north, Saturday's dry, some rain chances come back with a, just a slight chance on Sunday. We'll talk more about the snow potentially for some of you tomorrow and look ahead to that weekend as well coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes. Welcome back. Thousands of Hoosiers have lost their jobs because of the economic toll that COVID-19 has caused. But hiring Hoosiers continues to be our commitment to connect you to job opportunities. Here's a look at just a few companies with some open positions right now. Five Star Senior Living is looking to hire dietary aid workers in its dining department, full-time certified nursing assistants, full-time licensed practical nurses, and full-time activity assistants in assisted living, and full-time activity assistants in memory care. CNA and LP and applicants must be certified and licensed. Pet products company Chewy.com is planning to fill 640 new positions by the end of the month. Full and part-time positions are available. They are holding interviews on site right now. The Indianapolis Fire Department is looking for new firefighters. Reach out to them for a list of requirements if you are interested. Also, Kroger stores are hiring as demand for food and other products increases during Indiana's stay-at-home order. Speaking of Kroger, the company and America's largest food and retail union are calling on federal and state governments to designate employees 
employees at grocery stores as extended first responders or emergency personnel. Leaders of both groups say that grocery workers are playing a critical role in our communities and must be protected. They're asking for first responder or emergency personnel status for all grocery workers. The status will guarantee that those workers have priority access to personal protection equipment like masks and gloves. It is 545 right now. Todd, let's get a check of that forecast. And it's a cold one and it's kind of a broken record, Lauren. We've been dealing with these freeze warnings and cold temperatures throughout this entire week and today's no exception. In fact, today's probably the coldest stretch of weather that we've had. A more a morning, I guess I should say, as the temperatures have dipped down to 24 degrees. And one of the reasons why is it's clear outside right now. We don't have any clouds. 25 in Greenwood, New Pal at 24, as well as Fishers. 26 is the current temperature in Zionsville. Sunrise is officially this morning at 7.05, and that's key because once the sun comes up, we will take this number of 24 degrees and start to moderate the temperatures pretty quickly across the area. That's the good news. Crawfordsville, you're down at 22 degrees uh, currently. Throughout the morning hours, we'll go from the 30s to about 40 degrees by 11 a.m., 42 degrees um, by the noon hour. So that's a pretty significant jump, a full 18 degrees from where we are right now to where we'll be going uh, for the noontime temperature. And then eventually we'll see our high get up to 47 degrees here in the city. Some of you in southern locations today will get up to about 50 degrees. So today, while it is below normal, I get that, it's not a terrible day. Yesterday we had those bands of rain and snow that came through and then we were dealing with those gusty winds. It just wasn't a pleasant day to get out and about. Well, today you will have that opportunity with just increasing clouds throughout the day, but dry conditions until tonight. That's when things change and this snow arrives. And yes, this will be some accumulating snow for parts of the area. This time of year, I was talking about it yesterday. When the sun is up, it is really difficult to get snow to stick on the ground this time of year. It has to be really, really intense, especially with temperatures at or above freezing. Well, tonight the snow comes in, obviously, while the sun is down and temperatures will be hovering right around freezing. But the snow only falls in northern locations, and it's a really, really sharp cutoff from who sees snow and who sees no snow whatsoever. And then eventually everybody, with the exception of, say, Peru over towards Huntington, Logansport, uh, goes over to all rain throughout the day tomorrow. There could be one little period where there's a transition here in between Indianapolis and, say, the Tipton area over towards Muncie where a little sleet mixes in. But it's basically a traced about two inches of snow in northern locations, no accumulation from Indianapolis to the south where it remains all rain. Here are some specific snowfall totals for your communities. Again, nothing Indianapolis, tenth of an inch Crawfordsville. You're like right on the border of maybe one to two inches of snow and next to nothing. So again, it's going to be a very sharp cutoff, but nonetheless, if you do see that snow, it will melt very quickly because by tomorrow afternoon, temperatures are up into the mid 40s. It's right around 50 degrees in Indy. And then next couple days after that, we're into the 50s and 60s as finally, Lauren, some of those spring-like temperatures do return to central Indiana. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Here's a live look right now. Downtown, this is I-65 and I-70 at the North Split. You can see traffic there. Heading around the curve to southbound I-65 through the splits, traveling up to speed right now. But the lanes that take you eastbound on 70, those are closed. This is for that long-term construction project in Dot Moved Up that's scheduled to last through mid-May. So you'll need to avoid that area if you're trying to head over to the east side from this spot. You can head southbound on I-65 down to 465. Interchange on the south side, take 465 eastbound past Beach Grove around the east side to reconnect with I-70 there on the east side. Side. The government is closing in on a lending limit for small businesses. As of yesterday, the Paycheck Protection Program loaned $311 billion in relief money. The stimulus package stops at $349 billion. The Trump administration has asked Congress for another $250 billion for the program, but the head of the Small Business Administration says more than that will be needed. The SBA has processed more than 14 years worth of loans in less than 14 days. Online platforms like Facebook and Google are stepping up efforts to stop the spread of misinformation. Potentially dangerous false claims about the coronavirus have been circulating on social media worldwide. Tech companies are now using specific algorithms to try and seek out any misinformation. Many had already issued new guidelines and warnings to users posting incorrect remedies or harmful conspiracy theories. Health officials who have been pushing for efforts like this before the coronavirus saying platforms seem to be working faster than ever to stop misinformation. 
A handful of businesses on Main Street here in Speedway are open, and that now includes Dawson's on Main. I'm Brad Brown. We'll show you how this part of the city is making it happen coming up on RTV6. Live on CourtTV.com. Welcome back. Instead of gearing up for the month of May, restaurants in Speedway are also doing all they can to get by under the stay-at-home restriction. RTV6's Brad Brown found the Indianapolis 500 is not the only thing that brings the Speedway community together. Since 2006, Dawson's on Main has held down this corner of downtown Speedway. After a month closed on the state's shutdown orders, Wednesday saw Dawson's get back to business. Waited 31 days and it's time to uh, get the grills fired up. We've had so many reach out and, and want to support us, uh, but we wanted to do it smart. And, and I wanted to make sure that everyone was safe. That's our number one goal. Um, our number two goal is to serve our customers because that's 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 our lifeblood there. Three days a week we are ordering food from restaurants that are open just to uh, give a boost to our employees because yeah. we've we've not we're not all in the office every yeah. day. We were all excited to come here and pick up lunch. You know the regular customers we miss the most. You know that's who keeps our lights on and that's who support us. 365 days out of the year and, and that's who we miss. Dawson's is adding itself to a short list of businesses that remain open here in downtown Speedway. Normally they'd be getting ready for a busy month of May. That will be August now. But for those that are open, they're saying they continue to get great support from the Speedway community. As far as business goes, if, if we're not busy one day, another place is and it's great for the community. It really is. And it bodes very well for the future. People stick together and they look out for each other. O'Reilly's Pub is just a block up from Dawson's. They've stayed open with limited hours and a smaller menu. Owner Joel Wright says the support from the community has been a two-way street. We offer family meals. You pay what you can for a meal. Our meals feed four to six people. I've had a great residents of Speedway and Indianapolis donate money to feed these families also that need it. The servers, bartenders, we've had so many of them for so long that they miss their customers. You know, it, it, you take it for granted, really you do. Um, when you don't see someone for that comes in two, three times a week, it's a neighborhood bar and grill. It's a community thing. Um, and they miss them. And while they'll have to wait a little longer for these blocks to come to life, these businesses will be ready to wave the green flag when the time comes. Working for you in Speedway, Brad Brown, RTV6. Brad, thank you. RTV6 and the Indy Chamber of Commerce have joined forces to protect Indiana businesses. You can find out more about the Chamber's Buy Indy effort and profiles on businesses that are open by going to the IndyChannel.com slash open. Oh, and Todd, that food looks good. I want uh, to go to Speedway right now yeah. and hit up all those restaurants, but we can't right now. I know. It's hard to make a decision when you're on Main Street there because right? they're all so good. So that's why you just got to go back a couple times. So, I know. As Brad said, instead of May, of course, you can go visit them in May, uh, but we'll look forward to August when all things at the track really start to ramp up in Speedway. 27 this morning in Indy, 25 in Bloomington, 30 in Muncie. It's cold. Radar is quiet now. That'll change late tonight and then eventually into uh, the overnight hours. A freeze warning is still in place until 9 o'clock. We start off partly cloudy. The clouds increase, though, throughout the day. And then rain and snow arrives in the forecast overnight tonight. The snow is just for northern locations, and there could be some minor accumulation. We'll talk more about that coming up in the next half hour. But what we're all looking forward to is the warm up that's heading our way. Finally, the 60s return as we work our way into the middle of next week. So that'll be welcomed all across the area. The time now is 5.56. This is Good Morning Indiana. We're back in just a couple minutes. Stay with us. We'll see you at 6 o'clock.